Hello, I'm Brian from Bits and Brews with Brent and Brian. And uh, we were thinking about doing something a little different for the uh, third season of the show this year, which is instead of playing on the hacked Xbox with uh, all of the 10,000 games on it, we are going to come to my house and play some of the games on their original hardware in my game room that I've recently finished building. So, come on this way and let me show you uh, what I got in here. Oh look, it's Buzz already playing a game with no sound so that we can all be heard. How thoughtful of you, Buzz. <laughs> so, uh, set up for anybody who's doing any kind of a uh, retro gaming type of thing. It's what I've done here is relatively inexpensive. I've seen lots of people online building all their own stuff and doing all that kind of stuff. If you're like me and you can't build a piece of furniture to save your life, but you need to know at least a little bit about, you know, the workings of the systems and the electronics and the wiring and all that kind of stuff. But if you're not handy with building furniture, it's not that hard what I've done here. Um, first, you gotta get a good retro gaming TV. What I got is a uh, 32 inch Sony Trinitron. They were called Vegas or Vegas, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but in 2002, 2003, these were like top of the line $1,500 televisions. And this one I got for free. A man basically just told me he wanted it out of his house. And the other one I paid $12 for. So you can get these TVs off of Craigslist. People are literally giving them away. Uh, these are both the same model, KV32FS120. You've got four AV inputs. I believe three are RCA and one is component, if I recall. And then you've got RF in the back too for the really old system. So it's possible to actually run five game systems off of these TVs without any kind of um, switching or splitting at all. So if you if you only have a handful of game systems, one of these TVs would be enough, since you can have, like I said, up to uh, four video inputs plus an RF. So you can have five game systems on it without any effort at all, really. Once you start splitting the signals more than, than once, typically you're gonna get into image degradation. So I thought that it would be nice to have two televisions with uh, multiple game systems hooked up to each to just try to eliminate splitting them as much as possible. So what I have, all of these things are basically available online. And uh, I don't want to sound like a shill or anything because I'm not being paid to talk about these things, but what I found worked for the game systems was these. This is a uh, Radio Shack, surprisingly. You can still buy Radio Shack online in 2016. This is an auto sensing five port switch. So what that means is you can plug five game systems into the back of this thing and then plug that into one of your four AV ports. So in theory, I could run 20 different gaming systems off of this one television if I had four of these things, one plugged into each of the AV ports. That's a little bit overkill, so what I have is three of them. I have all my games plugged into uh, this television here, the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, the GameCube, and the TurboGrafx-16. So this is kind of like the Nintendo TV plus an extra. Then, with the other one, I went pretty much with all the Sega as uh, old Buzz is playing Streets of Rage 2 here right now. So you've got the Sega Master System, the Sega Genesis, the CD, the 32X, the Saturn, and the Dreamcast all going through this system, this television. Plus, on this Switch, the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. So, got multiple games running off of each TV. Now, like I said, these these TVs were dirt cheap, and you can find them on Craigslist for free, at least here in Louisville. This... All right, in addition to uh, the old CRT televisions, the Trinitrons, uh, there's a couple of game systems that I play that require the HD TV, being the uh, original Xbox, the 360, the PS3, mainly. Now, you can actually get component cables for the GameCube if you want to pay $200 for them, which is just absurd, so I don't have a pair of those yet. Uh, and you can run component off of the PS2, but only on certain games. So I really just have those hooked into my old school TVs because that's good enough. 
but this TV is a uh, LCD Samsung from uh, 2008. I don't recall the model number off the top of my head, but we can put that in the uh, in the notes on the video here. I bought this new and it still works. It's got component inputs in the back, which is important because some of these, like the uh, Xbox, the original Xbox, doesn't actually have an HDMI cable, so you need component. Whereas PS3 and the 360, you can just hook into regular HDMI. So a modern television, even one I just bought this year in the other room in 2016, I would just be able to play these game systems on. So it's not really so much important which TV you get, you just gotta make sure that you have at least one component output in the back, preferably two, uh, so that you can play the original Xbox if that's in your collection. As far as audio goes, um, I mean, you've got the regular built-in speakers in the TV, of course, so if you just wanna be lazy, all you gotta do is turn on the TV and play a game. If you want surround sound, I actually took an old surround sound system that I've had since the early 90s, which uh, the receiver of, is down here, kind of hiding out where, uh, where old Buzz is playing. So you've got a Denon receiver down here, AVR 20 something. We'll put that number in the, uh, in the video notes as well. Um, but really, I mean, any, any receiver will be fine. You've got that receiver. I've got these Bose speakers, again, from the early 90s, Bose Acoustamass that I bought when I, when I was a teenager back in the dark days. And uh, they play just fine. All you have to do is uh, make certain that the receiver that you buy has to have more than just HDMI in the back. The uh, modern receivers all pretty much have HDMI input component, maybe. So you gotta get an older one that has some of the uh, old RCA inputs, the red, white, yellow to be able to plug your game system in that way. Because otherwise, you can't really utilize it because none of these old machines are, are compatible with HDMI. So what we've got with that, all the old stuff essentially is hooked up through these speakers. All the new stuff, like the uh, newer PS3 and the HD stuff, I have hooked up into this monstrosity, which I <laughs> found at a Goodwill for $20. This is a 1968 Curtis Mathis stereo cabinet. And uh, this is where a little bit of the electronics know-how came in because I actually rigged it in the back to where I can play audio from this modern television through these speakers. So, and it still sounds amazing even 50 years later. This speaker I can't quite get to work so I wired in a little external here just until I can get it fixed but haven't got quite got around to that yet but when you turn on any of the modern HD systems you get sound from these speakers and it fills the whole room so you've basically got a surround sound system right here obviously you're not gonna find these on any street corner I just totally got lucky with it so any kind of sound system that you have would probably suffice but this is really cool and then the old speakers for over here and anywhere you sit in the room You've got complete surround sound from 1977 all the way up to uh, 2016, pretty much. One last thing, when you have all these old game systems, the large majority, if not all of these, old uh, AC power bricks that run the old systems, they, when they are plugged in, even when your system is not turned on, they're still drawing power. You can touch them and they're they're hot. So you've got them plugged into the wall, they're drawing power all the time, which when they you know are 20, 30 years old and you have 15 of them is not necessarily the best idea because eventually something's gonna go wrong, it could burn up, catch fire, burn your house down, who knows. So I wanted to have some kind of a kill switch to where I could basically not have to crawl behind here and plug in each system every time I wanted to play it and always have to unplug them and worry about them being plugged in all the time. So we bought two of these. This is a brand called Technical Pro PS9U Power Supply. Uh, specifically, it's, it's apparently used by DJs um, for all of their various musical equipment. And that's, the, that's the way I saw it being pushed online but uh for my purposes each one of these systems is plugged into a port in the back that corresponds with the switch in the front so you can do nine different systems on here 
And when I want to play the Xbox, that's the first one. I just turn that one on, turn on the Xbox. The power comes on. I could kill it if I really wanted to. And you see the power goes off. So it's the same with all of them. The 360B number two, then you got the NES, the Super Nintendo on down the line. So I can just kind of play any system I want without having say everything hooked into one giant switch that every time I want to play one thing I have to turn them all on or having them all plugged in all the time. So this is just a safety feature and you can get these online. I think I paid 30 bucks for them. So 30 bucks for a switch or for the, uh, for the boxes here and then around the same price for these switches. So basically to run this entire setup, I really only spent about 150 bucks because these TVs were free. Most of the other stuff I already had. I mean, this shelf was, uh, I built this shelf here for like $20. That's about the uh, <laughs> the uh, end of my knowledge, just cutting a shelf and putting it on a wall. But um, if you wanna keep your system safe, you definitely have to have some kind of a kill switch. So to play all the old arcade games, like the old coin-op arcade games, it's not really practical to have giant house full of 500 old machines. So I've got a computer here, just an old laptop that I wasn't using anymore, running MAME, which is the Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. That's a, you can go online, download ROM sets for MAME that include pretty much every arcade game that was ever released. Uh, some are Japanese, some are ones that didn't even come out here. So you can go and play your favorite games from that you remember from the arcade. I mean, some of them were probably ported to the old systems, some of them weren't, but the arcade games pretty much always had better graphics and better sound. And this machine and this program that these people have created emulates it perfectly. So all you need is an HDMI cable, which I have unplugged for some reason. But anyway, plug a cable inside the computer, plug it into the back of the TV here, and then you can play with these PlayStation ripoff uh, USB joysticks, just put them into your computer and play them on the big screen just like you were playing the original games in the arcade. So this is the only real emulation thing that I have set up at the moment, but it's pretty much the only way that you can play all those old games anymore. And a place to uh, store a lot of my extra stuff, tons of controllers, lots of wires, light guns, memory cards, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, I got a little closet area, but that's just kind of filled with mostly stuff I'm not using. So I found this awesome table uh, on clearance, and it opens up this way. So you got a little bit of storage in here where I put my giant Genesis arcade sticks and the old NES Advantage and the huge light gun that won't really fit anywhere else. You got a hidden drawer there. You've got Nice drawers down here where I can put in all the extra joysticks that I've got for PlayStation 64, Dreamcast, whatever. Then you've got drawers on the sides. So on this side, I basically just filled up with some light guns for the old systems. And on this side is all the little extraneous stuff like rumble packs memory cards, the Sega 32X for whenever I actually hook that up to the Genesis, the old 3D glasses and all that. But I mean, you know, if you got all this kind of stuff and you want to store it, pretty much anything will do. Like I said, I was originally going to do a filing cabinet, but this is much cooler, I think. So here's my first stand. This one is mostly Sega. You've got the Sega Master System at top, then the Genesis. This is the Model 1 Genesis, the original one, which is the only one that ever outputs stereo sound. So that's why you definitely want that one if you're going for a Genesis. The Sega CD beside it kind of sits on its own mount. And then I have a 32X that you can plug in and essentially make it three different game systems in one. And uh, under here, the Sega Saturn, which came out after the Genesis and failed very quickly. Then you have the Dreamcast which was Sega's last system. Kind of took off at the very start and then that just totally failed when the uh, PlayStation 2 came around. So Sega pretty much got out of the console gaming market at that point because they had lost so much money. 
and just started making games for everyone else. Down in the bottom half, you got the original PlayStation, lots of wires, PlayStation 2, and the Atari 2600. So that pretty much all runs off of this television. And again, everything is all plugged in up here. Right now you got the Genesis going. So uh, you just kind of turn that off and turn other ones on when you want to play them. The games that I have for Sega and for the uh, Master System, these are uh, EverDrive cartridges. So you actually take the games that you play, put it on a little SD card, put that into the cartridge, put the cartridge into the system, and then you can play every single game that was ever made for that game system off of one single cartridge. So uh, it's pretty cool. You just put it in, it brings up a little menu. You choose which games you want to play. Right now, Glenn's playing off the EverDrive. Streets of Rage 2. I'm, pardon me, Buzz. Buzz is playing the EverDrive. Look, he's so happy. <laughs> so you can play tons and tons of games without having to have, you know, thousands of games lying around. And uh, the collector in me would love to have all that stuff, but it's just not time enough or room enough to have all that stuff. And if you can play it all without having it, then why not? So I've got the EverDrive for the Master System, for the Sega, and then I'll show you the ones I got in the other tower here too. So this is the other tower, mostly Microsoft and Nintendo, original Xbox, 360, NES, Super NES, 64, and the GameCube. And uh, there's some of them, like the disc-based games, I tend to actually collect the discs, but for the cartridge ones, again, just like with the other side, you got an EverDrive, it's a little label that I made for it because I'm that dorky, and then you play all the games off of the, uh, off of the card. Put it in, start it up, bring up a little menu, which I can show you here shortly. And uh, same thing with the uh, with the 64. Just got the cards. I made labels for them, and then uh, they're inside. Basically, you take an old cartridge, you unscrew it, you take the guts out, and throw it away. Like this used to be a sports game, and then you put the EverDrive inside. It just fits right in. Screw it back in. Cut a little hole on the top with a Dremel, is what I did, and then you can put the cards right in there. So it just takes a little bit of work because most of the time the places you buy the drives from it's just the circuit board. So you gotta kind of do a little bit of the work yourself. But uh, oh, and then down at the bottom, a TurboGrafx-16 hiding out down there. Plus an empty space where at some point I'm going to get an Action Max, which is this ridiculous system that only had five games and they were all VHS tapes that you shot at the screen and killed ghosts and stuff like that. And it's just awful. And I want one. So that'll be down there eventually. But the way that the EverDrives work, you got this guy right in here. So the way my system is set up, this will be number three. We'll turn on the power to the NES. Turn on the TV. Just give it a second to uh, have the screen appear. I've got pretty much everything on this TV running off of video one, so I think that's where it's gonna probably pop up at yeah. So now this sit, the switches are auto-sensing. You don't have to actually push the buttons. Whatever you turn on, the switch senses it, and it'll just put it on the screen. There it is. So this is the menu that I created on my computer and copied to the uh, SD card. So you've got all the different games that you can play in here. So I can play, uh, oh, let's say I want to play Contra. He does want to play Contra. I always want to play Contra. Uh-oh, here, now we're going to play Contra. Oh, oh, there we go. So, uh, I don't know, some weird little glitch. Anyway, now you got two games going on at the same time on two different TVs. Buzz playing Streets of Rage, me playing Contra. And if you want to play a different game, you just got to hit the reset button, go back through the menu. I've got all mine divided up into European games, Japanese, light gun games, stuff for the power pad. And who knew there were only two games for the power glove? 
disappointing. But you can play pretty much anything you want. Just uh, put it in, select it. We'll play whatever, oh, go have to play Gargoyle's Quest, why not? So all the all the EverDrives work the same way, whether you're playing the one that for the 64, for the NES, for the Sega systems that I have. You just put them in, start playing. But you gotta put the games on first, so find uh, games online wherever you may decide to search for them. So I'm certainly not going to uh, say where I got them, but they're all out there for anyone who wants to look. Last and certainly not least, the guardian of the game room. Every game room needs a 12 inch talking turl from my favorite movie that everyone hates, Battlefield Earth, with the wonderful John Travolta as the giant Scientology preaching alien who just wants to kill people and then live in peace. But no, the humans have to go and attack him and rip off his arms and other things like that. It's just awful. So, he's here, he's watching over me all the time, and his favorite thing to say is this. Exterminate all man animals at will! Yes, indeed. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's my new man cave slash game room. And uh, maybe we'll be doing a few episodes of Bits and Brews down here this season. We shall see. So uh, thanks a lot. And where can they find us online? Ah, uh, well, uh, I know for a fact that we still have the website, uh, wix, the bits and brews dot wix dot com slash retro gaming. I can tell you that. Where can they tweet us at? I don't remember. I have no idea. It's at? <laughs> at Bits and Brews. Where can they email us at? Uh, bits and Brews at gmail.com. What if they have a question for Buzz? Buzz questions at hotmail.com. And are you, aren't you forgetting something else? Oh, yeah. <sighs> the greatest invention ever in the history of gaming. The Tandy 12 computerized arcade. 12 games, 12 very loud games <laughs> in one. So let's just, for example, say you want to play Torpedo, which is the uh, battleship ripoff. One of these buttons is now the battleship. You have to guess which one it is. So it pink, could be- Pink, 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 pink. All right. Oh, when it flashes, that means it's either in this lane or this lane. So, you have five choices. Buzz. What, what could it possibly be? One, two, four, seven, or eleven? I say eleven. Eleven? Oh, so you know mm -hmm. it's seven. And what does this play when you win? She came from Alabama with a banjo on her knee. <laughs> That's your winning music every single time you win at this game. Or any game on here. One more time. Uh-oh. That means it's either this one or this one. Ah, it's that one. Ah, whatever. So there are all kinds of games you. on here, man. There's Battleship, there's uh, <laughs> Simon Says, but they call it Repeat, you know, so they don't get sued. There's roulette where you take bets and the lights flash around. You're like, bet which one it's going to land on. Treasure hunts, another one where you're trying to find the uh, the actual order of buttons where there's going to be three that you have to press in order and you get clues about which one it is. So if you want to play 12 games from, I think this was 1982, definitely check out the, uh, the Tandy computerized arcade. You could do a lot worse. <laughs>